Hello viewers, welcome to my channel, Learn Electrical Engineering 1 to 1 pod. Hello viewers, in today's session we will start learning servo motors. These servo motors are used in automatic control systems and the basic purpose is to control the position of the object. This particular mechanism you call it as servo mechanism. Servo motors are used to convert electrical signal that is in terms of control voltage applied to them into an angular displacement of the shaft. They can operate in continuous duty or step duty depending on the construction. And the features regarding the servo motors are they have linear relationship, steady state stability, wide range of speed control, and low mechanical and electrical inertia and linearity of mechanical characteristics throughout the entire speed range and fast response. Depending upon the supply, that is AC supply and DC supply, we do have AC servo motors and DC servo motors. When we pick DC servo motors, the characteristics are linear. So it is easy to control here. At the same time, these are a bit expensive compared to AC servo motors. AC servo motors, the characteristics are non-linear, so it would be more difficult to control compared to DC servo motors. It is cost efficient. Application regarding DC servo motors are in large power applications and when you pick this AC servo motors, you can go for low power applications. Now we will see AC servo motor. Now this is the stator. And this is the rotor. AC servo motor is basically two phase induction motor except for certain special design features. These are the two aspects you are supposed to know. The first one is normal conventional induction motors will have high value of X by R that is inductive reactance to resistance ratio and when you go for the servo motor the rotor of the servo motor is built with high resistance so that the X by R ratio would be small. The excitation voltage applied to two stator windings will have phase difference of 90 degrees. Now seeing the design features, here we have stator consisting of two pole pairs A, B and C, D mounted on the inner periphery of the stator such that their axes are at an angle of 90 degrees in space. Each pole pair carries a winding. One winding is called reference winding and the other winding is called control winding. The exciting current in the winding should have phase displacement of 90 degrees. The supply used to drive the motor is single phase so that a phase advancing capacitor is connected to one of the phase to produce a phase difference of 90 degrees. The rotor construction is usually squirrel gauge and the cage rotor is made of laminations. Now working principle for this servo motor is the stator windings are excited by voltages of equal RMS magnitude and 90 degrees phase difference that results in exciting currents I1 and I2 that are phase displaced by 90 degrees and have equal RMS values. These currents will give rise to a rotating magnetic field of constant magnitude and the direction of rotation depends on the phase relationship of the two currents I1 and I2. Now the exciting current here will produce a clockwise rotating magnetic field and a phase shift of 180 degrees and will produce an anti-clockwise rotating magnetic field. The rotating magnetic field sweeps will sweep over this rotor conductors and this rotor conductors will experience a change in flux so, and so voltages are induced in rotor conductors. This voltage circulates current in the short circuited rotor conductors here and the currents create rotor flux. Due to the interaction of this stator flux and rotor flux a mechanical force a torque is being developed on the rotor so that the rotor starts moving in the same direction as that of 
rotating magnetic field. That is how AC servo motor works. Now we will see the transfer function of AC servo motor. Now M equal to torque developed by servo motor d theta by dt is angular speed tau l is torque required by the load j is moment of inertia as you already know b is viscous frictional coefficient of load and the rotor k1 is slope of control phase voltage versus torque characteristics k2 is slope of speed torque characteristics now torque developed by the motor is tau m equal to k1 into ec minus k2 into d theta by dt now here this expression is obtained by going for mathematical modeling using Taylor series and with the initial condition. The rotating part of the motor and the load can be modeled by the equation as you know load torque tau L equal to J moment of inertia T square theta by dt square plus B to d theta by dt. We have obtained this equation in finding the transfer function of DC armature control motor also. At equilibrium, the motor torque is equal to load torque j d square theta by dt square plus b into d theta by dt equal to k1 into ec minus k2 into d theta by dt. For this, we are taking the Laplace transform. j s square theta of s plus b s into theta of s equal to k1 ec of s minus k2 s into theta of s. Now from here, taking theta of, of s common, theta of s common, j s square plus b s plus k2 s equal to k1 ec of s. ec is nothing but the input voltage. Now, here, the output theta of s by ec of s equal to k1 by s into s common here j s plus b plus k2. This will write in terms of k1 by b plus k2 s into j by b plus k2 into s plus 1 that is equal to km by s into now m is plus 1 km equal to k1 by b plus k2 this motor gain constant tau m equal to j by b plus k2 that is motor time constant. So this is the transfer function for AC servo motor. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos.